If you're going to Yellowstone, surely Old Faithful is on your list of things to see. But did you know that there's a lot more to do around Old Faithful than just Old Faithful? So in this video, I'm going to tell you all that there is to do at the Old Faithful stop in Yellowstone. Okay, so let's get into it here. First thing I want to do is orient you to where Old Faithful is at Yellowstone. It is in the lower part of the lower loop here, along with some other geyser basins. So let's zoom in on those a little bit. There's Lower Geyser Basin that has the Great Fountain Geyser, a famous geyser there. There's the Midway Geyser Basin that has Grand Prismatic Spring, another famous feature in Yellowstone. And then there's Upper Geyser Basin, which has Old Faithful. Now notice the Upper Geyser Basin is the southernmost one, so these are named after their elevation, not their direction. And so we're going to zoom in on the Upper Geyser Basin, but first I just wanted to tell you why the Upper Geyser Basin is so amazing is in this in the world there's a, a thousand geysers worldwide about a thousand geysers 500 of which are in yellowstone which half of the world's geysers are there is quite remarkable and then 150 of which are at the upper geyser basin the most dense geyser basin in the world Here's an image, an aerial image of the Upper Geyser Basin. Up in the upper right hand side, you can see there's Old Faithful, but then there's all this other stuff here. The Firehole River runs through this Geyser Basin, and then there's all these other steaming. I mean, this is just the most incredible scene, I think. Now, this is a map of the Upper Geyser Basin, and it is large enough that there are actually two sub basins within it. There's Biscuit Basin and Black Sand Basin, each with their own parking lot. Okay, and so I'll get to those a little bit later, but for, the, for right now I wanna talk about what there is to do at Upper Geyser Basin. And when you pull up, I just wanna mention what it's like when you get there in terms of accessibility and what's on this map here. By the way, I'll put a link to this map in the description here. There's plenty of parking here at Old Faithful. I've never seen the parking lot fill up because there's so much parking there, which same cannot be said of some other popular sites at, at Yellowstone, but plenty of parking here. It's about a mile long to go on this blacktop out to the end of this uh, blacktop road here at Morning Glory Pool. Okay, it's about a mile out, maybe a little bit longer. The black line is the blacktop. It's uh, paved road. You can see there's, it's not a road to drive on, but it's, you can see there's a wheelchair and a bicyclist on that little road. You can, indeed, you can rent a bike from there. You can bring your own bike and you can bike out to the end if you'd like to. Now the red road, or the red lines, these are steep. So you can hike up behind a, hike up on a hill to kind of overlook the upper geyser basin. The little black slats that you see right in here, these are boardwalks. Again, those are quite accessible. You can use a wheelchair on those. You can walk on those. And then the gray lines right out here, these go into Biscuit Basin and going to Black Sand Basin. Those are gravelly roads you can ride a bike on or walk on. What is there to do here at Upper Geyser Basin? Well, there are five predictable geysers. That means there's five geysers that the park makes a prediction for. They will post prediction times on their app and at the visitor center. There are actually six of them that they do, but five of them are here at the Upper Geyser Basin. For the most famous, of course, is Old Faithful. If we move our way down here, there's Castle Geyser. Now, Castle Geyser has kind of a real big buildup around it, of this geyserite buildup, and it looks like a castle. And then I believe in the old days when it was first named, it actually had kind of like a turret looking thing sticking out where it really looked like a castle. I think that's broken off now. The next one is Grand Geyser. Now Grand is the tallest of these geysers. It sprays about 200 feet high in comparison to Old Faithful, which sprays about 180 feet high. It, it kind of reaches that and then comes down and then goes up. So it is the tallest of these geysers, but I still think Old Faithful is a prettier explosion and a and it really looks just as tall. Daisy Geyser doesn't shoot near as high, but it shoots almost as often as Old Faithful. So Old Faithful goes off about every one and a half hours, Daisy about every two hours. And then this is a really interesting one, Riverside Geyser. As you can see, sits right next to the Firehole River, and it actually sits on an angle and it shoots into the Firehole River. Usually it has a rainbow there with it, and that is a really pretty geyser and it, and it erupts for about 20 minutes. 
So you can see there's a little pull out here. And so there, all of these places, all these predictable geysers, they have seating areas around them because it's very common to, to gather around while you're waiting for that to erupt. So those are the five predictable geysers there. What else is there to do? Uh, you just can meander around on these, on these boardwalks. Now the Yellowstone official app has an audio guide for this area here that you can take a walk around and listen to a little bit about each formation as you pass it. Not each and every one, but it does cover a number of formations. For example, Beehive Geyser, which is shaped like a beehive. It erupts fairly often. It's not predictable, but it erupts fairly often. Giantess Geyser used to erupt a couple of times a year, but then it went about six years without erupting this last year. It erupted twice and so that's the thing about Yellowstone these are always changing always changing in fact Daisy didn't always used to be predictable and now it is Old Faithful is absolutely incredible because it has been very steady over the years ever since they first discovered it maybe in the early days it was going off about every hour and now it's about every hour and a half that changed after a major earthquake I believe but it's still very regular one of the reasons for that is Old Faithful has its own water system. It is not linked to any of the others, where many of these are linked together. It is a massive reservoir underneath the ground, and so when it shoots, it erupts about, I think, 8,000 gallons in a couple of minutes, And but there's like 300,000 gallons underneath the ground that it can hold. It's really quite a remarkable deal. As we look at this overview again, here are a couple of the major ones that I've that I pointed out on the map. Old Faithful up in the corner, Castle here, and then, uh, and then Grand over here. Something else you can do if you visit the Old Faithful or the Upper Geyser Basin is to visit Old Faithful Inn. And you really need to do this. This building is the largest log hotel in the world. It might be the largest log structure in the world. It's built from the lodgepole pines nearby. And you need to walk into it and look up to the ceiling. It's got this amazing view all the way up to the top with all these lodgepole pines in there really a remarkable building that was built in 1903 and they built it all in one winter just absolutely incredible this is an image an artist's image of castle geyser right here erupting with the spring in the foreground here this was painted by a very famous artist named thomas moran whose nickname became thomas yellowstone moran he was with the first major expedition of yellowstone back in 1871 and his paintings really brought the park to life at a time when people were still kind of wondering if this was actually real. The rumors of this place were real. So he, his paintings were presented to Congress and that convinced was one of the things that convinced Congress to set aside Yellowstone as a national park, the, first, the world's first national park. On that expedition, they, they not only brought along the artist Thomas Moran, but they brought along a photographer named William Jackson. So he went around and took a bunch of photos of the park. This is basically the same one that uh, Moran painted, so this is kind of cool, I think. And then Jackson also took the first photograph of Old Faithful. This is the earliest known photograph of Old Faithful erupting. And I've read some of these early guides to the park from the 1800s and early 1900s, and they say that some of the guys would put their laundry in there. They'd put their clothes in Old Faithful to wash them, to see if it would clean them. And it would blow them sky high, and then they'd pick them up when they came down. And they said it did a pretty good job, except on the more fine linens. It just blew those clothes to smithereens. So kind of funny that they that they did that way back then. People have not stopped doing weird things at Old Faithful in 2018 and 19. A couple of people went up to it and stuck their head in Old Faithful. Okay, they got, now you can't go up there. You're gonna get fined. You might get banned from the park. Uh, it's possible you get jail time, but a couple of people went there and stuck their head in Old Faithful. That is not a new tradition, actually. A bunch of people in the 1920s did that. A, a couple of years ago, about a decade ago, a couple of people got in trouble for peeing into Old Faithful. So there's, there's just something about Yellowstone that produces behavior like this. We did a whole nother video on silly Yellowstone behavior. Mm -hmm. So the two more things I want to talk about Upper Geyser Basin is the Biscuit Basin, which again has its own parking lot. This is just a short little boardwalk, maybe 15 or 20 minutes to walk around it. Maybe not even that really. Uh, beautiful sapphire pool here. And Biscuit Basin was named because the, 
it, it used to have these little formations on the ground that looked like biscuits. If you go there today, though, they're not there, and that's because in 1959 there was a major earthquake. And when the earthquake happened, a lot of geysers all over Yellowstone just started going crazy and blowing up. And Sapphire Pool was one of them. This is a very calm, blue, deep blue pool that when you when you walk by it today. But it went berserk in 1959, and it blew all those biscuits off the ground and into the Firehole River there. So the, the name, though, still stands as Biscuit Basin. There's a little trail here that you can take at the end of Biscuit Basin to Mystic Falls, which is which will overlook the Upper Geyser Basin, and it'll take you to a waterfall. And then there's Jewel Geyser here, which erupts about every 10 minutes. Not real high eruptions, but it does erupt about every 10. So that's Biscuit Basin. Now let's move over to Black Sand Basin. I like this one a lot because it's not as crowded. The, the tour buses won't stop here. A lot of people don't think about it. It's just a little stop. It doesn't look like it's much, but there's really a lot of cool stuff here. There's a river that runs through it, this Iron, Cre Iron Spring Creek. Just a little short boardwalk with some real pretty deep pools. Okay, Emerald Pool sits off to the edge here. And then right out here, there's a mountain range right next to it. Just kind of a trees and, and hill and stuff. So it's got really a variety of scenery around it. And then this cliff geyser greets you right as you arrive. It erupts often. And it goes off for about 20 or 30 minutes when it erupts. Like the last time we went there, it was erupting the entire time we were walking around. So really pretty cool. Underrated little place, Black Sand Basin, I think. Okay, a lot of people ask how much time to spend there. How much time do you need to allot in your plans? If you only have one day on the lower loop, then you only need to be about only need to be here about one or two hours. See Old Faithful erupt, go to the Old Faithful Inn, check that out real quick, and then you can be on your way. There's a lot of other things. The lower loop has a ton of things to see on it. So I would say just Old Faithful, just those two things, and then head out. If you have two days for the lower loop, though, I would say spend plan on spending about a half a day here. You can see Old Faithful, the Old Faithful Inn, you definitely should see Daisy because that goes off every two hours. You can fit that in for sure. Walk to the end of the boardwalk and see Morning Glory Pool. You can probably fit in some other geysers, by the way. Again, look at the prediction times and you can see maybe you can work them into your schedule. Eat lunch here, kind of plan your day around lunch. There's that audio walking tour that you can do, Black Sand or Biscuit Basin. A couple of, I, I put a tool on here. Um, so I, I told you I read some of these early guides for, of the park, and this Haynes guide on the left here was written by a fellow named Frank Haynes, who was the official park photographer, but he had explored so much of the park and taken so many picture, pictures that he started making his own guides to the park, and he did so for about 40 years. So uh, I told you I read through some of them. I thought they were really cool. The park was different back then. For example, it was very rare to see a buffalo back then because most of the buffalo had been hunted out of had been hunted out by the 1880s they were still just starting to recover in the early 1900s so it was really rare to see a buffalo at yellowstone which is funny because you go there today and you are basically guaranteed to see a buffalo uh, they're all over the place you're going to get a buffalo jam pretty much um, if you go there today okay so on the right here i have made a guide i'm making a guide right now by the time this video comes out it should probably be available but anyway, uh, I've kind of designed it to, after the Haynes guide, I thought that was cool. So I thought that was cool that he had a guide like that. So I kind of tried to make a little tribute to it. And so that's available for you if you need a game plan when you go to Yellowstone. And I would highly recommend it. I went to, I've been to Yellowstone for over 30 years and I had, had many frustrating trips there where I just felt like we were being really inefficient or we were caught up in doing some of the wrong things. It's just a big park. It's really easy to kind of lose your game plan once you start. So it, it really is helpful to have a game plan. So if you need that, definitely check that out. I'll put a link in the description. Okay, I hope you enjoyed that presentation on Old Faithful. If you're going to Yellowstone, please check out our channel for other videos about Yellowstone. So we have not only videos that are tips on how to travel to Yellowstone, but also information about the park. Things like the wolves of Yellowstone, the bison, the earthquake in 1959, the Grand Canyon of the Yellowstone, and some of the early exploration. So check it out. We're adding new content on Yellowstone all the time. Thank you for watching. If you like this video, please click that like button. We really appreciate it. Take care.